Hey guys and welcome to another video. I bought another HP workstation. This time it's the HP Z640. This one cost me around 375 Aussie dollars which converts to roughly 250 US dollars. Shout out to anyone from Ausbargen, that's where I got this machine from. And yeah, it's a pretty decent gaming PC. It has a six core processor. We have 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's got a 256 gigabyte SSD and the highlight of this computer, a Nvidia Quadro workstation video card, which is the equivalent to the Titan X, but it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Let's dive straight into some gaming benchmarks to see what this machine can do and then we will open up the machine. I will talk a bit about the hardware and what is a workstation, what are the benefits. First up we have Dirt 3, my favorite racing game. 1080p ultra details, we're getting over 200 FPS, sometimes even touching on 300 FPS. You guys asked me to test a few more modern games. Here we have Horizon Zero Dawn and we can see the VRAM usage. You look at that, nine gigabytes. So this is where the Quadro M6000 really comes in handy. We are getting a little bit under 60 FPS. So this is the game running with ultimate details. And whenever, basically in this video, I'm testing everything with ultimate and the maximum details. If we're seeing over 60 FPS, we're moving on to the next game. If we're seeing, if we're seeing less than 60 FPS, I will test the other detail settings. So here we have the results. Uh, switching to high, we're getting 66 FPS. Switching to medium, 78. And switching to low, we're getting 85 FPS. So Horizon Zero Dawn, play it with high details on this machine and we should get 60 FPS most of the time. Assassin's Creed Odyssey 1080p, ultra details, we're seeing 42 FPS. So again, I tested the other detail settings very high, we're getting 52. High 56, medium 68 and low 75. So this, this game is a little bit more demanding and you definitely have to lower the details a little bit to get 60 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p. That was a bit weird. I'm getting the same 39 FPS at all the detail settings. Um, so maybe we have a CPU bottleneck in this game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p. Highest details, everything maxed out. We're getting over 60 FPS, beautiful performance. I saw the same thing in Far Cry 5. This is running at 1080p, ultra details. I have enabled the high definition textures because we have heaps of VRAM on this video card and also over 60 FPS, so really good experience. And I saw the same thing in Far Cry New Dawn, 1080p, ultra details. HD textures and also over 60 FPS. Strange Brigade 1080p Vulcan API ultra details. This time we're not getting a warning about the VRAM because this video card can handle it. And look at that, around 100 FPS, beautiful performance. Doom is another game supporting the Vulcan API. 1080p ultra details. Yeah, it maxes out the API. Look at that, uh, 200 FPS, so beautiful performance. The Search is an older game, 1080p, very high details. And look at that, around 90 FPS. Also runs really well. And we have GTA 5, 1080p. I maxed out all the sliders in the options. There's some advanced options as well. And even with everything cranked up, we're getting over 60 FPS. So that is amazing. And you can maybe lower some of the details and then get even higher FPS. So really, this machine runs games very well. So that's not a bad computer, but does it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis 1080p, very high details, and we're getting 60 plus FPS most of the time, even uh, a little bit later in uh, an area that is a bit more demanding. So maybe we're getting a few starters here and there and a few frame drops, but most of the time, This machine runs Crisis really well. Here we have the machine and it's built extremely solid. It weighs around 15 kilos. It came with a IC dock drive bay. It lets you install four SATA drives, but it had this SATA harness and a Molex adapter and it was just a little bit messy. So I removed this and instead installed a SATA optical drive. It just made everything a little bit neater and cleaner. 
they installed a brand new Team Group CX2 SATA SSD. This one is 256 gigabytes. I am testing a lot of games, however, so what I did is install a one terabyte uh, Team Group SSD. That's big enough to install and benchmark all the games. Power button with power LED, hard drive activity LED. We have four USB ports, they're all five gigabits. This one has a little bit more power for quick charging and some audio ports. At the back, there's a power button here, two PS2 ports, two USB 2 with 480 megabits, uh, four USB 3 with five gigabits, gigabit ethernet and audio ports. We will check out the video card in more detail and it also came with a network adapter with fiber optic connectors. And here we can see the inside of the machine, very clean, very neat, a 1000 watt power supply. And this is a workstation and just a brief explanation, what does that mean? Firstly, the build quality is excellent. Parts, the, the components are over-engineered to make sure nothing breaks down. These are not computers you can buy uh, on the weekend at Harvey Norman or JB Hi-Fi. They're meant for professional customers. They pay a premium, they have expensive service contracts in place and they want uptime and reliability. So these machines are all about reliability and they just work. They use registered ECC memory so they can detect memory errors. That means they are more uh, stable against crashes, bugs, blue screens, and so on. The machine supports Xeon processors with up to 22 cores. This particular unit came with a Xeon 1650V3. This is a six core, 12 thread processor with a fairly high clock speed and for running games and uh, most productivity software, this is actually not a bad choice. With a workstation platform, we get 40 PCI Express lanes directly connected into the CPU. So there are two X16 and one X8 slot, which are directly connected to the processor. Great if you want to use high performance capture video cards, SATA controllers, um, and any devices where you don't want the band bandwidth to go through the chipset and be shared with other devices like SATA or USB. This machine comes with two 16 gigabyte modules. So we have 32 gigabytes running in dual channel configuration at 2133 megahertz. Ideally upgrade two more RAM modules and then the machine will be in quad channel configuration with double the bandwidth for even higher performance. A real highlight and the main reason why I wanted to buy this machine was because of the graphics card. This is the NVIDIA Quadro M6000 and this is basically the workstation equivalent to the Titan X which is a little bit faster than the NVIDIA GeForce GDX 980 Ti. On top of that it also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM which is beautiful. It's got a single 8 pin power connector and they're using a eight pin to six pin power adapter. There's a second uh, six pin connector here, so you can run some fairly capable video cards with this computer. Now it's time to see what this computer can do. I checked, we have the latest BIOS version. Next, I'm installing Windows 10, downloading all the Windows updates, and then the latest Nvidia graphics drivers from October of 2022. Let's start with Cinebench. In R15, we're getting 1057 and 132. In R20, we're getting 2419 for the multi and 331 for the single thread test. And in R23, we're getting 6162 for the multi and 766 for the single core test. I have some power consumption figures for you, the entire machine. Sitting idle on the desktop, the power meter registered 56 watts. Running Cinebench, the single core test, 77 watts. Running Cinebench R23, the multi-core test, we're seeing 150 watts. And playing Far Cry 5, the entire machine consumes 290 watts. So in terms of performance and value, this machine is really good. But there are some downsides that you need to be aware of. The first one is uh, this computer is very proprietary. It has mounting uh, holes, for example, that don't line up with a normal ATX case. So forget about 
case swapping, even the fan headers are proprietary. For example, a CPU fan header has six pins, so you can't just install a aftermarket cooler. The power supply, you cannot fit a regular ATX power supply in here and the connectors are also proprietary. And the other thing is tweaking, tuning, overclocking. There's not much you can do here. I'm not going to say it's impossible because in computing, there's always a way with an external flasher. You might be able to modify the bias a bit, but it's not straightforward and you can't use desktop RAM as well. So you have to use server grade registered ECC memory. So guys, what is my take on the HP Z640? We checked out the Z440 in a previous video and I thought that machine was built like a tank. Well, this one is even sturdier and heavier. A thousand watt power supply, which is absolutely brilliant. And you saw in the video, it runs most of the games perfectly fine. Now for high refresh rate gaming, this machine is probably not for you. It's better if you're playing older games or if you're happy with a 60 hertz monitor. The machine is not perfect. It is older technology. It uses a lot of proprietary parts, so you can't just replace the power supply or do a case uh, transplant. And the main weakness is the single threaded performance. The IPC is quite low. On the other hand, you're getting an entire computer for good price, good storage, good memory, a half decent processor, a really good graphics card, including a Windows 10 license and a case ready to go. So the value is definitely there. At some stage, I plan on upgrading this machine further. I want to give it the best uh, processor, which is like a 22 core monster. Lots of cores. It's from the uh, Broadwell generation. So it's one of those V4 CPUs. I also want to upgrade the RAM to DDR4 2400 in quad channel configuration and then see what the difference is. So what is your thought on this machine? Do take a look at Z440 and Z640 workstations at your local market. Have a look very carefully at the specifications. Make sure it comes with at least dual channel memory. You'd want, you want to avoid a machine with a single channel memory and also make sure what video card you're getting that kind of uh, de decides if it's a gaming machine or not. Although you can upgrade a video card, of course. And yeah, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? And that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do so. And I will put two videos for you to check out on the screen. Thanks for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.